Monday morning with Matt and Kevin. What's in the news? Topics that come up around the dinner table will be given the truth treatment with no punches held and no falsehood left standing. These two will debate real life issues from a Catholic perspective every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And now, here are your hosts, Matt and Kevin. Oh, happy Monday morning to you all. This is, uh, well, this is Kevin. I'm here with Matt. I, I didn't want to do too of a, uh, excited of an intro because it is the Monday no, of Holy Week. Right, right. Um, so, so, you know, you're going to have a bit more of a, you know, we're going to have a calm, relaxed. We're going to, you know, have a drink, a drink, a gross tasting tea type of a thing, you know, <laughs> for this Monday and Holy Week. Um, and we're actually recording. On we're going to sound like NPR radio. Yeah, exactly. Like and this. good so morning. Kevin. Yeah, exactly. Good, good morning. Matt. <laughs> um, no, but, but we're, I'm actually kind of a little surprised we're doing a show this week. We probably won't next week. I can't imagine us recording on a, on Easter Sunday. Um, so we'll, we'll take a week off next week, but today we got some pretty interesting topics. And I think that it, it kind of ended up that we're going to have a show as well. You're listening to us right now. We're going to talk about Candace Owens, uh, being booted from the daily wire. Pretty interesting. Um, Kind of the, the entire issue with, you know, anti-Semitism, apparently. Um, and also her saying that the 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 wife of the president of France is a man. That's also kind of uh, partly probably why she was fired. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Um, we're also going to talk about the, you know, the, the Vatican, uh, you know, more hugging of the earth and World Earth Day or, or something of the sort, which Matt has prepared pretty Pretty, you know, normal stuff coming out of the Vatican. And we might also touch on what happened in Moscow a couple of days ago, um, but maybe not. We'll see. It's a little dark, um, but we might get there. Matt, um, as always, you've done most of the preparation for this. Um, I, I guess I'd just say real quickly, I used to be a big viewer of the Daily Wire. I watched pretty much yeah. all of them. I, I liked yeah. Ben Shapiro has always bothered me, but I still I liked his debates because he's very sharp and he can really own people. As, as well as anyone out there. Um, and the other guys I like, I like Michael knows Knowles. I like Matt Walsh. I kind of like Candace Owens. She, she honestly kind of rubs me the wrong way sometimes, but um, I don't know. They're just reached a point where I just, I honestly almost couldn't handle them anymore. They got too commercial, too braggadocious, too, maybe too big, honestly. And, and so I don't really watch <clears> them, <throat> but I do have some things to say about Candace Owens, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you start. What, what on earth? Well, I think, I think, yeah, actually let me comment on some of the things you said there. I think that the daily wire was an outlet for American conservatives who were really tired with the rhino type Republicans uh, in the party. We were fed guys like Mitt Romney and John McCain and Rudy Giuliani and all these guys. And a lot of the Americans that were really so-called far right wanted a bigger voice. They wanted be, to be able to be represented on, on a national scale. And to me, at the time, the Daily Wire did that, Kev. They had all these really good talking points. As you said, they were sharp, they were quick, and they articulated their arguments against subjects like abortion and gay marriage that it almost seems like the establishment and the political realm didn't want to touch. Right. They, they kind of wanted to avoid bringing those topics up. And if they did, they were pretty moderate on them, whereas the Daily Wire went all the way. They were not afraid to call these things out for what they are. And I think that was a very attractive platform for a lot of us. A lot of the subjects, too, that they that they touched on, again, were considered or, or were aligned with the alt right or the far right. And it resonated, I think, with a lot of people. And they found a home in the Daily Wire. They found a home in a lot of these people, especially with Candace Owens becoming such a figure that she was, where she was a voice um, really of black America in a way that we haven't heard in a long time. She wrote a book, um, the, the name is escaping me, but um, really she talked about how Democrats do nothing but vote, I'm sorry, African Americans do nothing but vote Democrat because they're bought to stay on the plantation. She used very, very harsh language to, uh, to yeah, to describe what was going on. And her whole approach was, if we can get just a small number of Democrats, of, of, of of democrats or or of um of a black americans to abandon the democrat party then they will never win again they rely on our votes they've been she had a whole reason and a whole, a whole history for why that may be so and that would be another topic for another day but she really sold that point very well and i think that oh um blackout was the name of the book i believe and she really helped a lot of of african americans leave this democrat party because 
she really articulated well the reasons why they do not belong there. They should not belong there. You have to give guys like Trump and others a chance. What has the Democratic Party done for you in the last 60, 70, 80 years? And she made great arguments, and I think she won a lot of people over, and it really won the hearts and minds of a lot of Americans. So I think they were really strong on these moral issues. They were really strong on a lot of... Um, uh, I guess you can call it maybe bashing liberalism or arguing against the left. They did very well. But we forget that there is a very large portion of the Daily Wire that is very dark, that is very anti-Catholic, that is um, very much against what the church would would promulgate or teach. <laughs> Jewish. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And for, and for that reason, Candace Owens is out because she clashed with, I don't know, is his position. Is he the founder, the co-founder. Ben Shapiro's co-founder of, of, of yeah. the Daily Wire? And I have a few things that I want to share. So I have, uh, I found a tweet from uh, this woman who worked for the Daily Wire uh, up until 2020, where she was fired. And she kind of explains her reasoning. And I want to get into that there. But really, the the height of it, Kev, the reason why Candace Owens was booted from the network um, was really because she really had a lot to say about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And she spoke very poorly and negatively, negatively of Israel for two reasons. One, um, so you're saying she's an anti-Semite, Matt? I mean, she's oh, obviously you she cannot you Jews. cannot criticize. She hates right, the right, Jews. Right. She wants them all to die a miserable you death. Cannot you cannot criticize. You can't. Of course, you can. Uh, if criticizing is like murdering, come on, Matt. You can't. You can't, you can't do that. In Israel. Do How that. dare she? <laughs> well, here I think. So I, I think the tipping point was her her second uh, argument, but her first point was that the Jewish government was committing genocide in Gaza. They were attacking innocent civilians, which, of course, to these people like Ben Shapiro, you're wrong, you're lying. Uh, they want to hear none of it, which is true. And I, and I don't I think that America is just as guilty. America has carpet bombed com- uh, countries like Iraq and, and Syria where innocent civilians have lost their lives. I mean, we could take the blame as well. Um, but saying that against Israel really crossed a line for Ben Shapiro. But Candace Owens' second argument here was she said that there is a small ring of Jewish people in Hollywood and D.C. who are involved in something, quote, quite sinister. And she didn't really expand on that much more, but he was just taken over the top with that, and he had hmm. had to boot her. And the people are starting to come out saying Daily Wire is not friendly to Christians in general. Um and yeah, just just pointing out the flaws with with what Israel has done, uh, not only militarily in the region, but um, this group of people that she sort of suggests controls a lot of the narrative uh, in our country. That was enough for him. And Ben Shapiro has a very long history of being very anti-Catholic, being very anti-God, being very anti-Christ. Well, um, and, and he's we'll very, touch on that in a minute. He's very pro-war. I, I, and he's a total war yes. hog. And he's a guy who. You know, yeah, let, let's just go. We're going to go bomb, bomb everybody, bomb, bomb them all. Let's just go kill everybody because uh, they don't agree with us. <laughs> very good impression. I just want to go bomb, very good bomb them all. And it's just, I mean, but that's really how he is. I mean, he's, you know, he's one of these guys that, again, he's very sharp. And, and some things he, you know, he's he's pro life. He, he agrees on things and he can really defend them really well. And so Transgenderism. Just, yeah. Absolutely. And he, and he gets these these viral moments and he's had probably 20 of them in his, in his career that are massively viral that have changed the course of, of, of politics and history. I think that's true. But as you say, you actually start looking into a lot of his politics and, and he's, he's actually in a lot of ways a rhino. He, he's very much big government. He's very much pro-war. Yes. He's obviously extremely pro-Israel. And I'm not saying I'm anti-Israel necessarily. I mean, I think obviously, I, I think that they, you know, the, the Jews are clearly against our religion and we want them all to be converted but, you know, I'm not I definitely don't promote I don't want anyone in Israel to die or anything. I don't want any, anyone in Palestine to die. I, I'm anti-war. And I'm also, you know, I think you would I'm, I imagine you're probably the same. I, I, I am more of a someone who's a small government and just leave it be. It's not it's not our problem. And I guess if Ben Shapiro is a Jew and he wants to have a big part of what's happening in Israel, then move to Israel, I suppose. Hmm. Right. And uh, he, you know, a lot of the things that he has said, um, I, and I and I pulled up a tweet, Kev, this is one of them from him. Uh, he said, let me just pull it back up here. Um, I'm sure that a lot of Christians aren't pleased with my rejection of Christ as Lord. Uh, that was a tweet from April 2020. And uh, that's just the first of many. He mocked the movie, The Passion of the Christ. He, he said the sequel should be called He Won't Be Crossed Again. Uh, 
and then the, the great thing is i well i guess not it's not so great but then he kind of does this thing where he he tiptoes around his his statements and he says well this this country is built on judeo-christian values that is the most <laughs> that is such an oxymoron that term uh and i don't know why people kind of buy into it as often as they do what is judeo are you going to say something i i, I i'm yeah. going to disagree with you matt hey everyone listen we're going to i'm going to disagree with we're going to disagree actually, well kevin's going to be wrong here but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> just like he was with barry bonds yeah exactly yeah right no it's, but actually i think i'm a, i'm actually disagreeing but i think you'll actually agree with my disagreement i actually think sure. that our country that america was founded on judeo-christian values i think that's true it just ends up being that the Judeo values are the okay. bad ones. The Christian values are the good ones. So, so yeah, right, I, don't, right. I don't like uh, when you use when people use that phrase. Like, I am our country is the greatest in the world because it was founded on Judeo Christian values. Like, well, no. Now, I mean, I would even say if you want to say Christian values, the way they use that, you're, you're talking about Protestant values, which obviously, as we all know, they're they're pro life. I'm sorry, they're pro choice. They're they're pro. Um, you know, having multiple wives and husbands, you know, divorce, etc. So they don't actually really have that much morality. And I'm sorry, it's just it's often the case in terms of of these bigger issues. And and so, yeah, if you're saying, you know, Judeo Christian in that case, then, yeah, I think it's true. And I think you see America is not a Catholic country. It is not a moral country and it never really has been. And so I think if you're using it in terms of just what the the words actually mean, today you know not with a i shouldn't i should say how they're interpreted today christian being protestant judeo being jewish i actually think it's true i think america is a judeo-christian country it's not a catholic country and i think that's that's to me that's actually the difference hmm. well he he uses the term in a good way as if that the, right. as as if the two wrong. faiths ought to right as if the two faiths ought to intertwine one another and live and live co uh, coexist with one another and uh, both can contribute to the good. Um, they they are vehemently opposed to one another, and I think that's what he is kind of, you know, r really really rejecting. Um, and he has even said, I, I wanted I wanted to find one more thing here, and I uh, uh, I couldn't pull it up when I was looking. But so what's been going on around Twitter recently was one of the uh, Daily Wire heads over there. He said that the phrase "Christ is Lord" is anti-Semitic. And so yesterday <laughs> on Twitter, uh, whatever day it was, Saturday on Twitter, people were kind of flooding the timeline with Christ is Lord, Christ is Lord, Christ is Lord. It is a video clip of the one of the guys there. I don't know what his name was, but uh, of him saying that 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 phrase is anti-Semitic. So um, they're really throwing this stuff out at us, Kevin. I want to read this quote um, and it's on. So this woman's name is Queen Bethany and she worked at the Daily Wire up until 2020. And uh, she made a little post, and I'd like to read it here because I think we're going to see more of this stuff coming out, and I think we're going to see more and more people kind of realizing what is going on behind the scenes with a lot of these big multi multi million dollar companies. From what I could find, um, it looked like Candace Owens was making about a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar salary with the Daily Wire. So it kind of turns out that that's, I mean, I could be wrong. There's no, it's not like it's very clear, but from what I was able to piece together from doing some research, she brought in about a quarter of a million dollars a year um, at the Daily Wire. But so uh, Queen Bethany on Twitter writes, uh, Candace Owens made me feel the need to finally speak out. I was fired from the Daily Wire in 2020 because I was a Christian. And of course, I'll kind of make a little asterisk there and say i don't know what denominations they're referring to or whatever just that that's her language um yes it's true they really hate christians it was because i'm christian that in april 2020 after my three-month internship ended we were a month into la lockdowns and that jeremy personally called me and said they couldn't afford to continue to pay me they slashed everyone else's pay by 15%, 30%, and 50% for the COs. And yes, they even offered to rehire me after they moved to Nashville, but I knew that he was lying. I know in my heart of hearts that Jeremy, the Christian, previously a pastor of a small church, was turning on his fellow Christians. He can't stand to hear the word of God. And that's why he only keeps Matt Walsh and Michael Knowles to spout out their Catholic nonsense, which, okay, whatever. <laughs> Andrew Clavin doesn't count because he's too woke to be Christian. But me, I am too much, too much Christian for the Daily Wire to handle. 
I even quote Bible verses sometimes when I'm attacking people in Christian love because you know what, Jeremy, the love of money is the root of all evil. Candace Owens said the, I'm going off scripture, Candace Owens said uh, the same thing. She tweeted the same thing uh, recently to Ben Shapiro. And we all know that you love money more than you love Christ. And so Jeremy, the one who's in charge of hiring and firing, I now have proof that you've gotten close to your dog, Jasper, who is not a Christian. Um, so... Uh, she goes on a little bit more and just kind of goes on to a little bit uh, HR things here. But um, it's interesting the comment she makes about Matt Walsh uh, spewing his uh, Catholic nonsense. But um, <laughs> anyway, we, we could see here from the top that uh, that they don't they, they, they don't tolerate Christians. They don't want these opinions intertwined with them. And any sort of opinion or um, uh, opposition to their faith or towards Israel is not tolerated at the Daily Wire. And they will boot you for it. They will cancel you for it. And that's kind of ironic considering these are the people who fought cancel culture for the last however many years. They put their voices out saying how wrong it is for people to be uh, fired or doxxed because they refuse to get the vaccine. And um, you can't cancel people's free speech. Well, all of a sudden, all of these so-called rights that these conservatives like ben shapiro hold near and dear are out the window when you criticize their god well and i think it's interesting because i think there's a there's a really deep conversation to be had here about free speech because i think i mean if you think about it you know in the end okay if you're going to say speech is free every company Hmm. has the right to hire and fire who they want everyone has the right to listen to what they want so you know in, in the end if they want to only hire jews then fine. You know, I mean, if they don't want to have Christians, then fine. You know, I I mean, I don't, I I guess for me, it's like, then, okay, then why don't the Christians, the Catholics go and do something and try to do it better? If you actually have a free economy, which, you know, that's a whole different, again, it's a whole different topic. But I mean, you know, I think think the issue with these things are that eventually it it becomes, you become woke, right? Because you're, you're going to pigeonhole yourself into a corner. And you're, you're going to end up only talking about Israel or no one else can talk about anything that's not Israel. And no one's going to care. No one's going to listen to them anymore because it's, it's going to be like, OK, you know, I used to like you guys because you used to talk about, you know, the, the issues I cared about. And now it's only about Israel. So bye. You know, I'm, I'll go right. find somebody else. And, and I think that's what it seems like it's kind of heading. It's like, OK, well, you know, if you're going to fire Candace Owens, who brought a totally different spin to what she was bringing. I, I don't always love her. I, she kind of rubs me the wrong way, but, but what hmm. she was bringing was a very interesting voice and a very, yes, I, I agree. Different mindset and different, you know, way of looking at things, which I think is very valuable. I think, you know, if you have someone like Ben Shapiro, well, and Matt Walsh and Candace Owens, they have different views. You have to allow for them to have different views. you know. And even if it's against because- yours, even if it's against your religion, if you really want to have free speech and a free company speech, then you have to say, okay, even though, I really don't like what you're saying. I, I'm going to allow it. It's not illegal or, or whatever. So, And I think that since they're going against that, I think they'll fail. Well, if you if you look back at to really her her um her the taking off of her career was rooted in Trumpism and was rooted in that election of 2016, where the demographic that was supposed to be um uh, a near infallible vote for Hillary Clinton um was young, right? Young people voted Democrat. Um, was women, young women voted Democrat and minority. She's black. So all three of those were almost a shoe in for Democrats. And she is all three. She was, um, she's a millennial. I believe she was born in the late eighties, uh, 89. I want to say uh, she's black and she's a woman and she voted, was voting for Trump. And that was very, very, very against the grain at the time. So not only did she espouse these positions, but she articulated them very well and that launched her career. So yes, I agree. Her voice added a lot to the to the network, and she brought in some really good perspectives that I think a lot of people needed to hear. And we saw this a lot of a lot of Black Americans were really came out and saying that she helped me realize that what was I doing? I've been my me and my family have been voting this way for for decades, and have seen we've seen change. Uh, it's gotten worse, and she really enlightened a lot of American black Americans to what did Obama do for me? He was elected in a lot of ways because people wanted to see the first African American president. And a lot of black Americans felt abandoned by him, wronged by him. And she gave them a voice. She gave them a platform. She allowed them to see um, what you've been doing for the last near century. Isn't working. You have to give it a different try. 
And I, again, I don't agree with all that she says, and she's got a lot. I, I don't know if she's converting to the Novus Ordo religion. I, 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 it's been a, I know it's been a thing. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's been sure out either. there, but yeah. she's, uh, she's interesting. And um, she actually, I, I believe she stood before Congress one or two times to kind of um, push back on a lot of their talking points where she, she was like, I, I've never owned slaves. I've never been a slave. My family has never been slaves. Uh, and we need to stop this whole retribution kind of talk too. So she really goes against a lot of the talk that the mainstream media wants you to believe. And she's done that for a long time. And that's been her talking point. So now her critique of uh, these, not only what Israel has done in the Middle East, but just her suggestion that there's this group of Jewish people in Hollywood and in DC that are doing some really sick stuff uh, just just cross the line for him. There are people, uh, Kev, just one point really quick. There are people say that she is controlled opposition, that she is bought, she is paid for, she's making money. I think they're going to say that about anybody. Don't get me do started I, with that I group think, of people. Do I, think she, do I think she's controlled opposition? I would say probably not. Matt, um, I, I, I bet be you these, these people think that we are controlled opposition. We I, might be. I, I think, I we bet you... Be. I know these people on Twitter. Uh, I know them well. I'm probably friends with some of our, or once was, but yeah, everybody's. And I'm oblivious to it if we are. Then Every, I have the no plan. idea. Everyone yeah, knows you, the plan. You, <laughs> You send me my check every two weeks, and that's it. I, that's that, it. That, that's that, it. That's you know, it. There's nothing more. There's nothing I more. pay you well, and you show up for your, <laughs> for your job on Monday. Now, I'm going to pay With you. Excellent your, your health first, insurance. And that, it's incredible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And your first bonus is going to be a a a, 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 a mug. In the podcast mug. Yeah, a mug. I'm going to get that to you here after Easter sometime. Pretty. People, pretty can I throw this idea out there? Would people like? Little gift baskets of it, filled with yeah. maybe little Catholic goodies, prayer cards. Kept there's this site. I get them uh, off Etsy. There's this this one, one woman who, um, for two dollars a month, she sends you like five holy cards uh, a month. So I you enroll. So what, what I did was you, you you put your name on the list. Um, you give your credit card. So two dollars a month. It's taken out of your credit card, and uh, she mails you five holy cards, and they're beautiful. So something like that. You can we we yeah. can we can we can do it. Absolutely. We can. We can do it. Did you want to talk, Kev, about the uh, really quick um, about the the the, the, Earth Day. the yeah. lights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happened was, let me let me jump back to that here too because I want to uh, read it properly. So, um, yeah. So yesterday uh, or uh, Saturday, um, from eight thirty to nine thirty p.m. in <laughs> in Rome, um, there was Earth Hour across all of Europe, which I guess was some movement to remind people that you using electricity and turning on your lights and all that is really bad and you know you just hate hate the climate and you hate the world and you hate the every yeah you're just an angry individual if you're using electricity you're too modern in this modern world turn off those lights you pagan or whatever well um what they did was uh vatican uh, spokesman couldn't wait to partake in this earth hour and not only did they partake in it they released a statement saying that the lights of St. Peter's Basilica will be uh, off um, as part of Earth Hour. And then the Basilica, St. Peter's Basilica released a statement saying that we will be doing this to quote, and this is, I'm reading this, to inspire women and men, notice the order there, and to inspire women and men of our time to respect Mother Earth, end quote. That came from the Vatican. Literally Once, just saying Mother Earth is pagan. Mother, Mother Earth, Earth. That's a pagan Earth, phrase. The cry of the Earth, <laughs> as Bergoglio has often said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mother Earth is crying. If you go to, to his Twitter page and you search the word Earth and crying, you will yield many results. <laughs> uh, it's one of his favorite. I've done it. In my free time. You need yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Any single ladies out there, uh, let me know. We'll get you in touch with that. <laughs> but no, no. Right. But, I mean, we'll, we will be searching these things on well, Twitter. I mean, how crazy is it? Because I think, you know, it's one of those things that I, I am a fan of getting back to the earth and I'm a fan of saving the earth. I think you are too. I mean, these, these are good. Sure. Things, of course. But here's the issue. It's like, you know, so if these people in Rome, really believe in this and maybe there are some that do then and i mean this really sincerely go out into the you know into the tuscan hills and found a monastery without electricity and stuff you know it it was done for for 1500 years right and it gave us great saints go do it i mean I, I really mean that and i think there is great really good to be done there and i think that there is 
there are great things when you when you do turn off electricity and walk into the nature and nature is, is given to us by God. It is a beautiful thing. But I think the hypocrisy is just incredible. You just know for sure. I mean, first of all, Matt, they're tweeting this. They're tweet. <laughs> I mean, just consider, guys, everyone sit back for a second and think right, right. They're, they're tweeting. We're going to take an hour off of technology, you know, thump, thump my chest. You know, how, how awesome are we? You know, our electricity is going to be turned <laughs> off. It, it's just virtue signaling. You know, if you really care, stop driving a car, stop flying in airplanes. That's fine. I, I, I support people who do that. I mean, I mean, really, I love cities. That, that don't have, you know, these huge carbon emissions, emissions and stuff, and that don't have roads in the middle of the old towns here in Europe. You know why? Because it's a lot nicer to, to actually see and to actually travel around. So, you know, maybe that makes me a tree hugger, but there's some good things from this stuff. But the issue is how hypocritical they are. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's just, it blows me away. It's like Taylor, Taylor Swift, you know, the, the amount of emissions she's used on her private uh, flights. Oh yeah, then they lecture us. Yeah, Bergoglio. Oh, it's too. incredible. Uh, yeah, exactly. All of so them. it's like just, just be quiet. Just the presidents. You know, come on, don't talk to me about. But again, those. again, though, these sort of, especially during Holy Week, which we're in now, um, but these sort of issues really ought to be on the back burner of of what the church's <laughs> mission is. I mean, not that they're not that they're bad, like you said. Not that they shouldn't be talked about or addressed or discussed. Sure, there are a lot of good things you can kind of uh, get out of it. But the church's mission is to save souls and that what does that have to do with turning our my lights off for mother earth i mean and if and if they put out a lot of catholic content and in statements and whatnot on the regular then okay mention that you know this is something that we as catholics should be aware of no different than keeping a clean earth or pollution all those things like of course that should be part of uh god gave us his earth and we should take care of it of course but they don't concern themselves with any sort of thing that really starts salvation oh, at all have you in seen fact, a video from from um jordan peterson about that topic it's incredible like he i don't i don't believe oh no. it's so good you gotta look it up matt maybe, maybe look it up and even attach it to this video because it's it's so good and it's he, he's he's saying this ex exactly what you're saying he's like you know the the vatican he, he's talking about rome he's like you know they seem so so busy dealing with you know things of the earth when the, the you know isn't their job to save souls and, and he's like he's like you know they're, they're trying to take away from from people the primary purpose of life and that is to carry your cross it's like Matt. Th that's from Jordan Peterson. He's not even Catholic. Matt. You know, I was gonna say he's not even Catholic, and, and, and he's he is pretty much scolding <laughs> the supposed Pope. It, it's an awesome interview. I, I think it's five minutes long or something. Highly recommend and it. I'm not saying again. I'm not saying hmm. whatever. It's Jordan Peterson, but but just the fact that he's saying it about the supposed Pope. Well, guys, think, open your eyes. It's incredible. Think about think about the effects of that too. Is something like that could be preventing someone like him from joining? the yeah. church yes i think about it yes and <laughs> there are probably a lot of very well off you know good meeting um i'm jumbling my words here with what's, what's the expression well-meaning well off well-meaning well-intended you know what i'm trying to say well-intended people with good clear consciences um who want to follow the truth and they're not seeing it in this this Bergoglian religion yeah. and what a shame you know and i and i brought this up last time we call these people not you and not we but um they call these people who introduced this saints right and saint john the 23rd saint paul the sixth certainly uh saint john paul ii certainly ratzinger and, and francis i i think there's no doubt that their canonizations uh loom uh at some point they're preventing people of goodwill from coming into the true faith and it's it's awful it's, and they have to answer for that think about it they have to answer for that they are um their judgment how harsh that must be for us so yeah again these issues are very important and they and they should be dealt with and talked about of course but there's what we've seen from cardinal dolan uh kupich and all of these other men on on twitter lately i don't know if you've come across them kev is they are speaking very they're putting out videos honoring and celebrating ramadan and passover and all that again and again and again and again and again continually um they said i, I think it was dolan of new york who said they're all beautiful celebrations uh combined in one um now if if such a clergyman were to say something like that in the days of Pius x um he would have faced severe discipline and there's stories of Pius X disciplining men for much worse than 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 that. Um, I think I, I said the story on the show before that there was a bishop 
um, or maybe even a cardinal, but a bishop who um, w- would occasionally spew some heresies in his sermons. Um, much, uh, n- nothing, uh, nothing anywhere close to what we're seeing today. And Pius X called him into Rome, and he took the. It must have been a cardinal. He took the the hat off his off his head, and he said, "Have a good day, Father." Uh, and as, as a means of stripping him of all of his of his, you can undo the priesthood, but of stripping him all of his titles. Um, Bergoglio should be doing that, of course. I'm sure he's coming out swinging with you know a, a correction and, and 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 smashing of heresy, uh, and of course he's not. So, Mother Earth is crying. Mother Earth is crying. Yeah, exactly. And and as you say that that's that's the message right before before Holy Week. That, before that, Holy Week. But but yes. again, man, it's like I mean, why is it that I'm seeing on on Facebook or Twitter wherever it was? I mean, I'm saying I'm seeing Jordan Peterson, a non-Catholic, telling me that the primary goal in our life should be to carry our cross. There are a lot of people like that. I think Candace Owens would say the same. I think, and she said similar. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, yeah, a lot of these. There are a lot of these Protestants who are of goodwill. And who do, um, who would be more susceptible to the truth if they knew it? And and I've met and I have met people like that. I've actually, um, I knew a Protestant pastor, um, in person, um, who was very well intended, had good intentions, and um, was actually turned off by a lot of the things he saw out of Francis and all of that. And um, I explained to him our position, and he actually said to me, he "Goes that actually makes a lot of sense? I, I see what you're saying there." Um, and I think, you know, we have to, it's in my Catholic faith. If anyone has that catechism, it's in there, how to, how to deal with non-Catholics. Uh, it says we should, we should be careful of how we converse with them. And we should you really point to the four marks of the church and use that as a means to kind of begin our argument. And I think there are a lot of people who are Protestants um, who do want the truth and who would love nothing more than to live their life for God and the church uh, if they knew or if, or if it were presented to them well. And I think that's something that we should really keep in mind, too. Um, the ho- holiest week of the year coming up, Kevin. Um, you know, I think all of the the ceremonies that are done. You know, that's one of the things that makes me sad is um, a lot of our priests now here in the U.S. They travel and they go from chapel to chapel across various states. So there's nothing. You know, we don't have the services that used to be at all. You know, I think there's a somebody found um, a Holy Week schedule out of it might have been St. Patrick's in New York City in 1940 or whatever, and it was like there were nine masses a day uh confessions 24 hours you can go some there was priests available 24 hours in the confessional um now think about what we've lost because there are some set of contest chapels and all that that are pretty more so well standing and, and independent but there are a lot of others where the priest travels and he stops right. by for masking and then that's it he has to go to a different state um i know here um, a lot of our priests, they travel from Boston to Maine, to New Hampshire, to New York, to New Jersey. Uh, the handful of them travel five state states on a Sunday That's just crazy. to hear mass, hear sacraments, hear mass, hear sacraments. Um, how stretched full, how, how, how stretched thin we are. Um, and from what I heard from uh, some priests uh, when I was speaking with Father uh uh, Orich, I believe you'd say his name. Uh, he said, "You're much more abundant in the U.S. than you are in here in Europe." Um, so consider yeah. that a blessing, a blessing too. But that's it, yeah. And, but and I think the, the the beauty of it too, though, is you know, and obviously, yeah, you go back to 1940s. But I mean, if you think about it now, you know, they even the Novus Ordo doesn't have enough either. I know for sure. Here, no, they, they have they have like no, no, no priest, no. and they don't no. have the sacraments. You know, I think mean, that's that's the right. beauty of it that that even if it is one, one of the days of Holy week, you know, you still get the, you still get the Holy Eucharist, you still get the true sacraments. And that's, that is worth it. But you're right. I mean, it, it is, obviously it is hard to deal with. I'm, I'm lucky. I live in a parish where our, our priest stays here for the whole Holy week. So yeah, we all, all yes, the ceremonies. And, yep. But, but I do recommend, I mean, anyone listening, I do highly recommend to you too, Matt. I mean, if you ever get the chance, go to somewhere like Pennsylvania with Bishop Sanborn. Uh, I don't know yes. if they have, I'm not sure they have public mass. If they do go there, I mean, go to Omaha, go to Cincinnati, Brooksville, to, Florida. Yeah, there, is, exactly. Is there you go. Go to Brooksville. Go to somewhere that popular. has, especially if they have a bishop. Think Gertrude. Oh, they got the. And if you have a bishop, yeah. you have these bigger. You have the solemn masses during Holy Week. Right. I, I'm telling you, it is definitely worth it at least once in your life to see. Highly, highly, highly yeah. recommend. Plan it for one year. You know, go for a Holy Week. It, it was always one of those things that in in Omaha, it's just it's just different. You can't even describe it because it's just, everything's bigger. It's all solemn. You all, mm-hmm. you have a Bishop for all the ceremony. So and you also have the blessing of the oils on Thursday morning and you have the tenebrae yes. Wednesday evening. And it's, it's a whole yes. week thing. 
and you're really doing something all the time and it's, oh, it's beautiful. Really beautiful. I, I highly recommend it. Um, one of those three places, probably, I'm sure there are probably others around the world. I hate you go to Nigeria. I'm sure they have big, big ceremonies. Oh, as well. right. With um, Bishop. Uh, In comic. Eh? I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say his name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think, I hope I say that right by now. I've, I've interviewed him a few times, but. Yes, but no, he's but, great. Oh, I love him. No, absolutely. But, but yeah, I mean, go somewhere where you can have these big ceremonies or at least go to a big parish, even just with a, with a set mm -hmm. priest that, that, that has these, because I think you can't do it every year. Of course, that makes sense. But maybe every five years, you know, and then you really get that really strong Holy Week. Cause I think that'll boost you. It can I'm boost sure, you for uh, a whole year, I think. Of course, much better than Steubenville. Um, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Spokane probably has some really nice stuff yeah, too out there with the, down. um, with, for uh, sure. I don't know. No, where, where's, um, where does Bishop Peverun is? He's he, Omaha. Nebraska. He is in. He's in, Omaha. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, I, yeah. I always got to experience was with Bishop. Gotcha. Peverune. Very nice. So then uh, Bishop McGuire is going to be in Ohio. I think so. And then, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Bishop. Uh, I don't know if. if So I'm wondering if in Brooksville, Florida, if there was a bishop. Bishop Selway, I think, is, is there. Is, he's, but, he but is there. Okay. He's, he's the, the bishop of the sisters. But I, I would assume he would have public. He would too. But. I, I don't really know, don't know about Pennsylvania. If, if anybody knows, let, let they, us know. That would be good to know if they have public masses in Pennsylvania. Or in I Pennsylvania. almost, I, I, I'm inclined to say probably not because I know that um, some of those priests, they have it in hotels on Sunday, on, yeah. in hotel basements and all of that. So I, but um, sure. you know, yeah. you, you, you think about here, um, over there in Europe, there's Father Dutiri. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he's been, I, I don't think he's really on Twitter much anymore, but um we, you know i was just talking about driving from boston to to maine uh he flies yeah. into england into a different yeah. country like right. from france um i mean these are these are on un, parallel times yeah. and like man i you know he really makes me you know think of the the sacrifice a lot of these men make to Whew. just give sacraments and to give uh totally speaking of being you know thinking about being tired like wow no, and, and that, it, that's what's funny is you have a lot of these Novus Ordo priests that are too tired to do Saturday and Sunday in a row. Look at what our clergy is doing. Crazy. No, time I mean, zones it, and it's crazy. incredible. It, I, and as you said, some of them are having three or four masses a day during this this time of year. So, as we've said on several of the last podcasts, pray for our priests this week. It really yes, is, you did say that. Yes, it is their their busiest part of of you know of the year. So the, they're just crazy running around everywhere doing all these ceremonies. And, you know, just, it's, got, it's one of those things I try to think myself. It's like, you know, we go to Holy Week and it's hard, right? It's, it's a, it's a lot of long ceremonies and a lot of prayers we're not used to. And, you know, and, and you kind of have to bear through it sometimes. Well, just imagine the priest, you know, I mean, right. they got to do all of these and then probably they have to go know what they're doing sometime. know what they're right. doing, know what all the servers are doing, know right. what the choir is doing. Very you know, complex. I, mean, I used to serve, I've served. It. Yeah, it is. It's, it's very, it's, very yeah, difficult. No, absolutely. Especially the pre pious the 12th is very difficult. And, and they're also at the same time giving confessions and et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's, it's just, it's, it's, we can't fathom, I think the heroes of, you know, I, I've been, I've been studying the world I, war two lately or listening to world war two. And it, they, of course they're heroes too, but it really makes me think it's like, you know, they're putting their bodies on the line, but the things that priests yes. do for us, especially these days, talk about her heroism. It's, it's incredible. I heard a story uh, in the area here where they had, um, it must've been, um, midnight on, uh, I mean, one of the midnight masses and so they had you know the the priest said mass and then after so he so he had confessions from like 9 to eleven thirty, and then mass from midnight to whatever 1 30 in the morning and then confessions again after it and then 6 a.m confessions for an hour and a half until 7 30 then for 8 a.m mass and it just and then and then so or i guess he came out and gave the sermon for the mass and then while the mass is going on going on went back into the confessional uh and stayed in the confessional for all of mass and then as soon as mass ended they switched places so the priest who sang mass went in the confessional and the priest who was in the confessional prepared for the next uh uh mass um like you're right talking about putting yourself on the line talking about over talking about work yeah Right. And very strenuous work. This is caring Ugh. for souls. This is much uh, in, in a lot of ways. It's harder than than manual labor because you're caring for souls, which is uh, very heavy, especially yeah. the, these good priests. I think of uh, St. John Vianney, who often said that he took on the, the weight. He did the penances for a lot of his 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 penitents. Hmm. Like he said, he would give very simple penances uh, and I would do the rest. Uh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, you, you think of a lot of the work these men do. And like you said, and I think it was your brief 
uh, Catholic Family Podcast update, one of the lives you did really quick, just said, pray right, for right. our priests yeah. the, by name. And I, and, I, and I try to do that, you know, take your rosary and give each bead, uh, say a name of a priest that you know who is working very hard and ask Our Lady to, to sustain, just to, wow, <laughs> to sustain him. Absolutely. I didn't have I didn't have beer today. That's the second time I'm summing over my words, and I do not have beer. It's, it's still pretty coffee. early for you, man. It's I hope pretty not. early. Yes, <laughs> you, you got to have some stronger coffee next time. The stain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, well, well, Matt. As always, it's, it's been a pleasure. It's been fun. Um, we hope everyone enjoyed it as well. Um, it, it's my birthday today. As everyone's listening, so you guys better comment happy birthday to me. Um, if not, I will ban you. <laughs> I don't think I can do a that. Flood before. of comments. We yeah, want. yeah. We need a flood of comments, guys. We need we need to be upvoted as as we would say but no seriously though um like share subscribe all that fun stuff we will not be here um next monday that's easter monday it's actually a holy day in germany um interestingly enough easter um, monday easter monday a holy day so we got to go it's it's, mm. it's, a, it's a busy week for us over here um and so we won't be able to do that obviously right. we're not going to record on easter sunday so we wish all of you all matt i wish you as well a very very um blessed holy week and very yes. happy and holy easter to all of our listeners as well we'll be back the week after and um as always yeah let us know how you all are doing what you think um go ahead and complain to matt um (laughs) wish me happy birthday and we will see you guys in two weeks matt till then god bless you make the world catholic again